Well, some of the other benefits are you can leave money to minors. That's the second way assets end up in probate court. Minors. Minors cannot inherit more than $5,000. I have had three instances this year where grandparents were doing the nice thing and they left their grandchildren a chunk of money. And in this case, it was like $12,000 for four grandkids. Unfortunately, all of these grandkids were between eight and 12 years old. Anyone under 18 can't inherit more than $5,000. So although grandma and grandpa did something nice for their minor grandchildren, all these parents had to go to probate court, get a conservator in place for this minor to manage this money they just inherited from grandma and grandpa. It's gonna cost mom and dad $3,000 in legal fees for the fact that their 12 year old just inherited money from grandma and grandpa, right? You can avoid that through a trust. We can list the trust as the beneficiary of some assets and we can put in that trust that we want our minors to inherit money. There's provisions we put in there that allow minors to inherit money because someone can manage it for them, okay? Um, if you have special needs children, if you have a special needs child who's on some sort of um, government assistance, whether it be Medicaid, uh, Social Security, income-based Social Security, whatever it may be, if they're already on government assistance, they can't receive money. If they receive money when you pass away, they will be disqualified, they will be removed from all of their government benefits, they will have to spend down their entire inheritance and then requalify, which is a huge pain for individuals who need to be on these sorts of benefits. We can plan accordingly and we can do certain type of special trusts that allow children with special needs to inherit money while still maintaining their benefits, okay? So a trust can allow minors to inherit money, it can allow special needs children to inherit money. You can determine what ages your kids get their money. So in my case, I have little kids, they're 12 and 11. I don't want my kids inheriting money when my wife and I die if they're 18. I don't want them getting it until they're 25, a chunk at 30, the remainder at 35. So I have provisions in my trust that say they get a little along the way, someone manages it from, for them along that way and they can make distributions for college, for books, for a car but it's managed for them so they can't go and blow it, okay? So we can control what they get, how much they get, what it's used for from the grave. So we use trust to kind of rein in maybe kids who are fiscally irresponsible, allow minors to inherit money, keep our affairs private, make it the beneficiary of assets that didn't have beneficiaries like bank accounts, houses. So we use this legal entity, this revocable trust, to avoid court lawyers and do what we want to do, make sure we control how our assets are distributed when we pass away. Okay? Um, one last thing about trusts. Trusts are legal entities like an LLC. Okay? We've all heard of LLCs. Some guy wants to go start an asphalt business. He goes, he starts an LLC, he buys a whole bunch of equipment in the name of this LLC. Great, his LLC owns something. Trust is like a legal entity, like an LLC, but it needs to own things. How does it own things? Well, that's where our financial advisors come in, through beneficiary designations. Through designating the trust, the contingent beneficiary of our life insurance, or our brokerage account, or making the trust the beneficiary of our, of our property, of our bank accounts, right? So when we've got the trust listed as the beneficiary, then our trust is funded and things don't end up in probate court. Does that make sense? Okay.